In this example, I'm going to determine for the function f of x equals x to the third minus 3, 3 halves x squared, what the possible points of inflection are, and then identify the intervals of concavity, which will help me find the exact points of inflection. To find the possible points of inflection, you need the second derivative. So in this function, the first derivative would be 3x squared minus 3x, and the second derivative is 6x minus 3. The possible points of inflection would have x values where the second derivative is equal to 0. So I'm going to take that second derivative, 6x minus 3, solve for x, and I find that x is equal to 3 over 6, or 1 half. And I'm going to say that x equals 1 half is the x-coordinate of a possible point of inflection. In part b of this problem, to identify the intervals of concavity, you have to realize that this possible point of inflection, this x value for a possible point of inflection, breaks this graph apart, breaks the function apart into intervals. And those intervals could be concave up or concave down. It is possible that the graph changes concavity when x equals 1 half. The two intervals that, it, that are created by the x value of 1 half is the interval from negative infinity to 1 half and the interval from 1 half to infinity. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a value in each interval, for example, in the interval from negative infinity to 1 half, I'll choose a 0. And in the interval from 1 half to infinity, I'll choose positive 1. And I'm going to evaluate those 0 and 1 in the second derivative. And if it is positive, that means that every point in that interval is concave up. And if it's negative, that means every point in that interval is concave down. Let's see what happens in this situation. When I substitute a 0 into the second derivative, second derivative was 6x minus 3, I get a negative 3. The important thing is that it is negative, and that tells me that every point in that interval, the function is concave down. On the other hand, when I substitute a 1 in for x, 6 times 1 is 6, and 6 minus 3 is positive 3. The important thing, again, isn't that the, the, I've got a 3 as the value. The important thing is that it is positive. That tells me that every point in that interval is concave up. The function from 1 half to infinity is always concave up. So to actually state the intervals of concavity, what I would do is I would say from, from negative infinity to 1 half, that's concave down. And the graph is concave up from 1 half to infinity. If you were asked to state the intervals of concavity for this function, it could be stated as concave down from negative infinity to 1 half and concave up from 1 half to infinity. Part C is asking for the points of inflection. Some functions have 1. Some have more than one, some don't have any. But this one does have a point of inflection. We found a possible point of inflection at x equals 1 half, and it is a point of inflection because the graph changed concavity. Before x equals 1 half, it's concave down. After 1 half, it's concave up. A point of inflection is any point where the graph changes concavity either goes from concave up to concave down or goes from concave down to concave up. The point of inflection here has an x-coordinate of 1 half and the y-coordinate would be the result of substituting the 1 half into the original function. So the x-coordinate is 1 half, the y-coordinate 1 half to the third power minus 3 halves times 1 half squared is equal to negative one-fourth. This is a point of inflection on the function f of x equals x to the third minus three halves x squared.
we take a look at what this functions graph actually looks like, can see that it does start out as being concave down. This is concave down, and then at some point it switches to concave up. The last part of this graph is, is concave up. And we found that using a calculus that the point of inflection was exactly one half comma negative one fourth. Let's see if that makes sense. This would be the x value of one half. This is the x value of one half. And if you take a look closely at how this y axis is labeled, this would be negative one half. So this point, it makes sense, could be exactly negative one fourth, and it is. This is the point where the graph, exact, exact point where the graph changes concavity. It's called a point of inflection.